Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of the AQA A-Level Research Methods Core 1. Uh, we're going to carry on by talking about experimental design. There are three types of ex experimental designs that you need to remember. First of all, the independent group design. This is when there are two different groups of participants in a study. So, let's say there's a group of females and there's a group of males. There are two different groups, obviously. Uh, therefore, two different conditions, and this um, reduces. Uh, well, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages. So, uh, there are no order effects, so n no one gets better through practice, and there's no boredom and anything like that. So the participants don't get bored, and there are fewer demand characteristics. So, being in only one condition makes participants less likely to guess the aim of the experiment. Uh, conversely, disadvantages. Um, participant variables are a really big problem in uh, independent group design since there are two different groups. So let's say, well I've just said females and males as two different groups. It's quite hard to compare the results since there are different sex. So that's one disadvantage and I think that's the only disadvantage for uh, independent group design. Um, the second type of ex experimental, de experimental design is um, repeat and measures design. Uh, this is basically just one group in two separate uh, conditions. So they take part in the first condition and then the second condition. So there are no uh, participant variables since the same group is used, so it's really easy to compare the results to the first and the second condition. So this is basically the vice versa of um, independent group design, to be fair, because the disadvantages and advantages are completely are completely opposite to the independent group design. So just remember that. Uh, disadvantages then, uh, participants are more likely to become practice, so therefore demand characteristics. Uh, since they are doing the experiment twice, and since they are in the experiment for longer, uh, they are more likely to get the aim of the experiment, which can really mess up the results. So, advantages, participant bar variables are low. Disadvantages, demand characteristics are high. Uh, However, we can use counterbalance counterbalancing to prevent this. So it's random order of participants going condition one, and then a random order of participants going condition two. So that's basically counterbalancing that eliminates the problem of the practice disadvantage. But still, there are still disadvantages with counterbalancing as well. The final type is uh, the match pairs design. Um, this is basically two different groups with uh, a matching correspondent, you could say. So let's say there's a male, uh, twin males. Oh, this is really bad. This is a really bad example. But twin males, one one twins in group one, the other the other twins in group two. And they're they're in different conditions, so it's easy to compare between the two because they're exactly the same. Uh, so the advantages are there in uh, order effects, so there are no like practices and stuff since they're only taking part in one condition, and there are low levels of participant variables since the correspondent is pretty much equal to the other one. So yeah, that's basically the. They are basically the um the advantages, the disadvantages. It's really hard to find these participants uh, since it's hard to find someone who is pretty much the same as the other one and it's more kind of time consuming to um, collect these participants as well which leads to waste of time and money Yeah. observations now uh, this is when observations are collecting data by observing participants in natural environments there are many ways we can do this um, there are two types of observations that you should remember the naturalistic and the controlled environment Observation. Naturalistic um, observations are observations that everything is being left uh, how it normally is. So 
it's like a field experiment. The advantages then are uh, we can do, discover new facts about our behaviour, and there are, there are high levels of ecological validity since uh, nothing's been affected, pretty much. So pretty much the same as a field experiment, uh, disadvantages and advantages, so hence uh, the disadvantages are um, there is low control over extraneous variables and there are problems with observer bias and uh, rely reliability of uh, observations since they cannot really be easy, easily repeated. So yeah, basically the same as um, field experiments. And therefore, controlled experiments are really similar to lab experiments since these observations are conducted in a lab. So the advantages of this. It can manipulate variables to observe it affects uh, reduce extraneous variables since it's in a controlled environment so there is less effect in a new experiment which make the uh, which makes the results um, more valid, more reliable because there are less extraneous variables and it's easier to repeat as well since it's in a lab. Uh, you can increase reliability by just incre increasing how many times you do the experiment. And since it's in a lab, it's not really hard to repeat it since there is already a schedule and plan already for it, so it's easy to do. Disadvantages it's, there is reduced ecological validity since lab experiments are not really related to everyday life. Tasks that you usually do in a lab are not really, you can't really relate them to real life situations, so uh, hence low ecological validity. Um, again there are problems with observer bias and um, reliability of observations since uh, it's pretty much like the experiment, it's like the research bias really, like if an, if an observer wants something to happen they may like design the experiment in order for that to happen which is a really big problem. Uh, there's a way we can collect observa observation information um, certain techniques we can use behaviour categories which we just like um, get a piece of paper and they make a table certain behaviours and we like tick off how many times we've seen it or make a tally or whatever and that's how we like accumulate information more efficiently and more uh, fast as well and that's basically it for um, observations uh, sampling now uh, there are a few types of sampling that you must remember sampling is just collecting information about things I'm pretty sure you know what sampling means anyway. Uh, ran random sample. This is one type of sampling. It's when you just when everyone has an equal chance of uh, chance of being selected in a sample. So you might do this by drawing straws, um, anything like that. So advantages: everyone gets a fair chance of being selected, and the sample is more likely to be represent representative. So. Yeah, that they are the disadvantages. Uh, advantages. The disadvantages are it may be impartial with the large target groups. So let's say there are more people in this, uh, more, more people in the sample. So more more type, more than one type of person. So there are more like uh, girls and boys in the sample. That can be really biased, and therefore make the results biased, and invalid. And uh, yeah, that is, they are uh, the, um, the advantages and disadvantages to random sampling. Uh, opportunity sampling, this is when you just go on the streets and you just collect people and ask them if they want to be part of your sample or not. So it's basically choose to be in a sample. Uh, the an advantages of this is it's quick and easy, quick and easy and practical way of collecting results and samples, and then more these uh, types of sa this t type of sampling is used by researchers in universities and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a very popular way of collecting data. 
uh, disadvantage us. It's unlikely to be representative since more people could answer, could like be in the sample than another type of person like I explained before. And yeah, it's hard to generalise the findings if we um, end up end up with something like that. Uh, voluntary or volunteer sampling. Is this when you just put like an ad in a newspaper or whatever, like uh, Mulgrim did, and people just um, sign up if they want to be part of the sampling or not, the experiment, whatever. So <coughs> this uh, yeah, it's, it's it's more uh, it's more. This is like supports uh, right to withdraw a bit more since the participants actually want to be in the experiment. Uh, advantages large numbers of people would probably respond if there is money involved pretty much making it more representative so there are more people you can test with obviously and the more people you have in an experiment the more valid the results are uh, disadvantages uh, it's more likely to be biased again since uh, could be more people. There could be one more than one type of person in the experiment. So let's say there are more males and females this time, and therefore the results are biased. It's hard to generalise the findings. Uh, systematic sampling. This, if you are doing maths, this is like you know the nth term when you just make a sequence, so n plus one, n squared, minus three, or whatever. That's when you, every participant is given a number and then you just sub that into the equation and then you just find, you just uh, choose a few participants doing that, which is quite smart in my opinion, but yeah. The advantages are, um, <coughs> it's more likely the sample is evenly sampled, so it's like equal, equal maps of people, so the equal amount of uh, women and men. It's one advantage. Disadvantages is <clears throat> it can it can be a hidden periodic trait within the population. Um, yeah, and that's they basically the advantages and disadvantages. Sorry. Right, uh, that's it for sampling. Uh, so yeah, that's it for research methods. Thank you for watching guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more psychology videos, law videos, maths videos, and uh, economics videos possibly. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you later.